Go. All right. One of the other things that we've talked about are those three different Chinese philosophies. So I want to go through some of the basics for those. First one we talked about was Confucianism. Remember that Confucius was actually alive while the Zhou dynasty was falling apart in China. So his philosophy is very comprehensive in lots of different aspects because he's trying to figure out a way to restructure the whole society so that it functions better. One of the important concepts to Confucius was the idea of filial piety. Filial piety means that a person should respect his or her parents, um, respect your elders, respect your ancestors, um, which is very much in line with traditional Chinese culture prior to Confucius. So this is kind of a return to traditional values, if you want to think of it that way. One of the other things that Confucius said was that people, in order to have a well-functioning society, should follow a code of politeness. One of the aspects of his code of politeness was these five relationships that people should observe. For example, ruler-subject, husband-wife, parent-child, which is sometimes translated as father-son because it is a patriarchy, um, old-young, and friend-friend. I think I got all five of them in there. Um, the reason each pair is listed in a specific order is that the name that comes first, for example, husband-wife, is that the person listed first is the one who is owed the respect. They are more important. They are supposed to be the ones um, you know, who really count in the society. No kidding. Yeah, I have it, I know. Yeah, pretty, yeah, pretty Go much. ahead. Okay. All right. In terms of government, Confucius said that what you should have is a well-run bureaucracy and the people involved in the bureaucracy should be a well-trained civil service. And this idea is going to be adopted by later dynasties in China. And this idea of people having to qualify for their jobs by taking tests, that people will do a good job if they're qualified to have the job, becomes a very integral part of how China is going to run for a long time. And in the United States today, over half of the civil service, people who work in the government bureaucracy, get their jobs through taking civil service exams. The major written work that outlines all of the views of Confucius is called the Analects. He did not write it. The Analects is a series of writings from his students. They're sometimes called his disciples. Um, basically explaining all of his stories and anecdotes and um, platitudes, and you get a lot of the, the Confucius says quotes from the Analects because it's other people talking about what he said. That's where all of that comes from. Now, did he actually say everything in the Analects? There's no really good way to know that, but the Analects is pretty much accepted as the teachings of Confucius. One of the other schools of thought that we talked about quite a bit is Taoism. And you may see older spellings of this with a T instead of a D. It's the same word, it's just a slightly different spelling. Taoism focuses on nature. Okay, there is great reverence for nature in Taoism. The Tao is the way. So in order to follow the way, one should observe nature, one should try to live a simple life, one should not, for example, seek to have a bunch of material possessions and wealth and be really ambitious and try to dominate other people because that doesn't really fit with kind of living in harmony with the world around you. Lao Tzu is considered one of the major proponents of Taoism. We don't really call him the father of Taoism, but it's his writings that really give us a good sense of what Taoism is and what it means. One of the concepts for Taoism that ends up being kind of important is the uncarved block. And the idea of the uncarved block, meaning like a chunk of wood that has not been carved or has not been altered, is that things are best in their natural state 
before man has stepped in and kind of messed everything up. And again, going along with that, living in harmony with nature, go with the flow kind of idea. And the major written work that we associate with the Tao by Lao Tzu is the Tao Te Ching. There are lots of verses um, in the Tao Te Ching. There are lots of different translations of this. Um, some of them are very eloquent, very poetic. Um, and they're all very coherent in giving a really good sense of what the Tao is about. It's a very comprehensive philosophy with a very simple message that focuses on nature and the natural world and kind of fitting oneself into it. All right, the third philosophy that you need to know for this unit is legalism. Legalism is almost entirely focused on government ideas. The founder of legalism, one of the most important writers about legalism, is Han Fizi. Sometimes <coughs> excuse me, his name is written as two words. Um, but Han Fizi is the one <coughs> who formulated a lot of the most important writings about legalism, so we get a lot of our ideas about it from him. Now, legalism is very strict. It's very, you know, crush your enemies and reward your supporters kind of a philosophy. Um, you don't get a lot of wiggle room with legalism. It's either you follow the leader or you're probably going to die. Um, censorship goes along with this, the idea that if people are writing things that disagree with the government, you burn books you imprison people or you kill them to get to get them out of your way. Um, this is the I will crush you like bug philosophy. And again, Taoism, very comprehensive, one central idea kind of fitting with nature. Legalism, I will crush you like bug. It's, it's those two, very simple. It's Confucianism, where you have lots of different ideas because his goal was to restructure all of China. So you get lots of different stuff from him. A couple other ideas that kind of fit in with this in terms of Chinese thought and religion. The I Ching is a book of oracles. Um, we talked about other oracles before. We talked about oracle bones in China, which were a way for people to communicate with the gods. The I Ching is a book of oracles that would also help you interpret the will of the gods in order to have a question answered. And the last one, which is kind of semi-religious, is the yin and yang. And you see this on really bad tattoos and really crappy bumper stickers all over the place. Um, yin and yang stand for the natural rhythms of life, the masculine and the feminine, and the balance that you have between those things in the world. 